Hi, I'm Seth Kosullivan, CEO and co-founder of NS Nanotech. I'm here today to talk to you about how our nano LED company quickly focused our development energy on a technology that will be a game changer for our COVID-19 response and for future potential pandemics. Indeed, the number three cause of death in the U.S. and the world in a non-COVID year is airborne infectious disease, and so our knowledge of displays and light emission couldn't have found a more passion-worthy project. Our company's mission is to develop next-generation nano-LEDs that will create a brighter, more efficient, and healthier world. For those of you who don't know us well, we are still in our startup phase, but we have a complete portfolio of patents developed by one of our co-founders, Dr. Zeti and me, at McGill University and the University of Michigan. So we are a startup with more than a decade's worth of R&D already under our belt. And in the past year, we have staffed up with senior technology, manufacturing, sales, and marketing leadership with decades of experience. Last year at Display Week, we introduced and won awards for a nano LED technology that promises to solve the LED world's green gap. We set world's records for directionality and bandwidth demonstrating 6% EQE in a 5 micron green LED. And we've made massive progress since then. In 2021, we worked with a manufacturing partner to put in place the world's first MBE foundry producing in-GAN semiconductors. We have made breakthroughs in the growth of our nanostructures, allowing for a completely inorganic passivation material to be used. This subtle change has a profound effect on performance and yield, allowing electrode deposition to be much closer to conventional LED methods. This greatly improves electrical performance, including rectification ratio and efficiency. And we have set new standards for efficiency of a green LED, demonstrating over 11% external quantum efficiency in a less than one by one micron LED. But of course, by this time last year, COVID-19 had already changed our world forever. Remember, we had postponed Display Week from May to August so that we could have it in person in 2020? That and a whole range of other activities didn't happen over the last 15 months. But we also knew that our technology had unique capabilities to help prevent the spread of COVID and of future viral and bacterial pathogens as well. That technology is ultraviolet light an extremely strong disinfectant that can instantly kill coronaviruses and other pathogens. From the start, we knew our nitride semiconductor platform technology could deliver cost and efficiency improvements, not only in visible LEDs, but also in the invisible UV spectrum. Our aluminum gallium nitride chips emit in the UVC wavelength range, and Professor Zeti and Me's lab had demonstrated these to me on my first visit to meet them in 2019. When COVID struck, we realized we could generate powerful, invisible dis disinfecting light that could be used to kill the virus. So we made a pivot to development of nitride semiconductors and LEDs that create UV light for disinfection applications. Ultraviolet light Specifically, light in the UVC wavelength range has been used for more than 100 years to disable viruses, bacteria, and other disease-causing microorganisms. It is also used for food, air, and water purification and to sterilize hospital operating rooms, stores, and factories. How does UV disinfection work? By attacking the RNA and proteins of viruses and bacteria, it prevents them from replicating. It neutralizes and deactivates them as soon as it hits them. That's great news because it soon became clear that respiratory aerosols are the principal means of COVID transmission. They travel further and linger in the air much longer than the droplets that were originally blamed for spreading the infection. It's those aerosols that you must worry about on an airplane, in a crowded theater or restaurant or in the dining room at the nursing home. And again, in 2019, airborne infectious diseases were the number three cause of death here in the U.S. behind only cancer and heart disease, and it is similar around the world. However, there's a limitation with standard UVC light. 
Currently, UVC light is most often delivered in the 254 to 275 nanometer wavelength range, but 254 nanometer photons penetrate and damage living cells in the skin and the eyes. In other words, it's not human safe. We all know that UVA and UVB rays in sunlight can cause sunburn and cancer. It can also cause damage to your cornea, causing keratitis, or what we know as snow blindness. The same holds true for 254 nanometer light. It doesn't penetrate as deeply into human skin as UVA or UVB rays, but it can still cause damage. So today, 254 nanometer UVC light can only be used in enclosed areas when people are not present, with timers and robots. But we are still finding use in a train car after its last ride of the day, or an airplane between flights, or an operating room at night when no one is there. Human safety of standard UVC light has limited its usefulness as a general disinfectant, especially in locations where people gather and spread viruses through aerosols as they talk, shout, sing, or breathe on each other. But just about a decade ago, researchers made a brilliant discovery. So-called far UVC light at wavelengths shorter than 254 nanometers is much safer for humans. Far UVC light is equally effective, maybe a little more effective, at deactivating viruses and bacteria, but it does not penetrate the skin or eyes. Unlike the longer wavelengths of standard UVC light, far UVC gets absorbed before it reaches the living cells in our skin. If you look at the top of the chart, that stratum corneum layer of skin is in fact a thin layer of dead skin cells that coat our bodies. That layer of dead cells absorbs all the far UVC light before it can damage any living cells. Similarly in the eyes, the inner tear layer over the live cells in the cornea performs the same absorption function. Since then, a trove of research studies has documented the safety of disinfection with far UVC light. A landmark study published in the journal Nature by David Brenner of Columbia University in 2020 found that, quote, far UVC light efficiently kills pathogens potentially without harm to exposed human tissues. Another study from Hiroshima University published in the American Journal of Infection Control found that far UVC light eff effectively kills SARS-CoV-2 while remaining safe for human exposure. So you can think of far UVC as a Goldilocks wavelength solution. Like longer wavelength UVC light, it provides all the power you need to kill viruses and bacteria. It is extremely effective. But its short wavelength means it doesn't penetrate eyes or skin, so it is exceptionally human safe. Given the safety and disinfecting power of far UVC light, it's easy to imagine that it can be used as a global engineering solution in the fight against COVID and in preventing future pandemics, the common cold, the flu, tuberculosis, etc. But as always, there's a catch. If far UVC disinfection is human safe, you would think we would see more of it deployed. Why isn't it? Because it's costly and difficult to deliver. Current 222 nanometer far UVC light sources are based on low pressure eczema lamp technology requiring the use of caustic gases and chemicals such as krypton chlorine. They are also large, run extremely hot, and have a limited lifetime, about 3,000 hours. We decided there had to be a better way and that a solid state solution would be the answer. A solid state far UVC emitter would run cooler, have a longer lifetime, wouldn't require dangerous components, and it would deliver more output in smaller form factors. It's the age-old story of the benefits of the transition from analog to digital, from gas to state to solid state technology that we've seen in industry after industry. Indeed, the CFL backlights that we used to discuss in here have completely given way to LEDs, and we are all working hard to displace liquid crystals with OLEDs and micro-LEDs next. But then, of course, there's another catch. 254 nanometer UVC LEDs have been developed, but so far there are no far UVC LEDs available for disinfection. A quick look at the bottom of this chart shows why.
products in the 265 to 275 nanometer range are 1 to 3 percent in efficiency. This graph from Mike Crane shows research results at more like 10 percent. But LEDs at less than 230 nanometers exist only in the literature, including from our own Professor Zeti and Me's research group. At wavelengths less than 250 nanometers, LED efficiency quickly falls to near zero. Our nano LED technology eventually will deliver the higher efficiency you need for far UVC disinfection. Unfortunately, that's a three plus year development effort on our own roadmap. But we had a little trick up our sleeves. When we were breaking down why this was so hard and why it was going to take so long, a light bulb went off for a member of our team who realized we could deliver much more powerful far UVC light from a current generation semiconductor he was already working on. We got right to work developing a solid state far UVC lamp utilizing standard nitride semiconductor components. Within several months, working virtually in basements and garages through the height of the pandemic, our team built a prototype of the world's first solid state source of disinfecting far UVC light. Here it is, the shortwave light emitter which generates human safe invisible light at a peak of 219 nanometers for air and surface disinfection. We've been granted a patent on this innovation already, and I'm proud to say it's the fastest I've ever seen the USPTO approve a patent without any changes or revisions. You can see that while our emitter is a semiconductor diode that emits light, it's not the kind of one millimeter by one millimeter LED chip that we're used to. So we're careful not to call it an LED, but because it's the only solid state emitter capable of emitting human safe far UVC light, it has generated tremendous excitement. The phone has kept ringing off the hook with queries from major suppliers of lighting and disinfection solutions, from healthy building experts, and from many others who had been desperately searching for solid state far UVC light sources. We've responded with working prototypes and have started shipping evaluation kits to many of these customers. And they are starting to design infrastructure solutions and to make our public and private environments more resistant to coronavirus and future pathogens. Here you see our prototype of a personal far UVC air purifier for consumers. Our lamp is packaged inside along with its power supply to deliver enough disinfection to effectively cleanse your personal airspace at the rate that you breathe, roughly half a liter of air every four seconds. If you start to think about the potential applications of this safe general engineering solution, you'll see they are near limitless. Imagine if we'd been able to disinfect the air in our schools to keep them open for the past year or if we'd been better able to protect frontline workers in grocery stores and service businesses, or if restaurants and bars had been able to stay open, or if we'd all been able to travel more safely on planes, trains, buses, and ride shares, how many lives could we have saved? All these preventive measures are possible with human safe far UVC light. In fact, we like to say far UVC is a first line of defense against COVID and other pathogens. Far UVC light attacks viruses proactively, neutralizing them before you breathe them in, before you have exposure, and with a delivery method that is easy, convenient, and unobtrusive. Your face mask will continue to be a second line of defense, which will block any viruses that make their way to your face annoying but effective. Then vaccines will be a third line of defense. Remember, vaccines only work for specific viruses and take a while to develop each time a new one starts to spread. And a vaccine only goes to work after a virus has entered your body and triggered your internal immune response. But when we add the first line of defense, disinfection with far UVC light, we may provide enough protection to prevent future isolated outbreaks from turning into epidemics or, God forbid, another pandemic. I like noting that the flu basically went away this year, something we always had the power to do, but didn't deem worthy of the nuisance. Far UVC could make it a non-factor in our lives. 
How has our pivot towards UVC disinfection impacted our product roadmap? Well, we're still marching toward a future where nano LEDs and micro LEDs will disrupt the display industry over the next three to five years. At the same time, we have made our full pivot to UVC disinfection products. We will be delivering far UVC purifiers for consumer health and our shortwave light emitters to partners developing commercial far UVC disinfection solutions in the coming year. We expect our emitters to be built into a broad range of public and private infrastructure solutions that will help prevent future pandemics. Finally, over the longer term, we expect to deliver on the promise of our nano LED technology to deliver the first true far UVC LEDs. This pivot to the invisible end of the spectrum, delivering far UVC disinfection solutions will consume us over the next several years. What does that mean for our ongoing development of display technology in the visible spectrum? We are currently reaching back out to potential partners who have inquired about licensing and partnerships for our nano LED technology for development into visible display products. As you know, the range of possible products and markets for visible nano LEDs is enormous, from AR and VR to computers, phones, and large signage, just to name a few. We will explore with these partners all possible options for commercializing our RGB nano LED technologies to ensure this disruptive technology delivers on its promise as soon as possible. The world has changed a lot since Display Week last year, and NS Nanotech has changed along with it. But with all that, we remain true to our corporate mission. We are completely focused on creating a healthier world through brighter, more efficient nano LEDs. Our industry has always prided itself on its ability to innovate engineering solutions to big existential problems. We're delighted that at NS Nanotech, we've been able to utilize everything we've learned about generating light with solid state technologies to address one of today's biggest existential challenges. That feels good. From today's solid state far UVC light emitters to tomorrow's nano LEDs, we will continue the fight with far UVC light. Thank you as always for your attention, and I hope that I can address any questions that come up either at author interviews or directly at seth at nsnanotech.com. Thank you very much.